As we fast forward throughout history, we live the, leave the Byzantine time period up to about 1455, where we're introduced to a young man by the name of Johann Gutenberg, established in Mainz, Germany, at which time period Mainz, Germany would be the equivalent to the, what New York City is today. Of course, instead of trading stocks and bonds, you would go to Mainz, Germany to maybe have someone do some metal work for you or some goldsmithing. Or maybe you would have some barrels or order a couple ships to be built. But that was the atmosphere of Mainz, Germany at that time period. Probably a great time period for a young mind such as Johann Gutenberg to come up with that epiphanal moment with the creation of the movable typeset. There are no schematics, there's no pictures, there's no documentation that actually truly shows us what did Johann Gutenberg's printing press actually look like. Most scholars believe he probably converted something that was already in existence at that time to make for practical use of the first printing press. As we look at our particular press here, really what it was actually designed to be was a wine press or a cider press. The only slight modifications that were made here is where this plank now stands would have been a trough. And of course, under that trough would have been an old wooden bucket that would have caught the juices from the apples or from the grapes as they pressed them. Gutenberg's genius, or at least part of his genius, was the removal of that trough and insertion with the plank of which the typeset would actually set upon. And this gets us to the phase of how did Gutenberg's printing press actually work? That's what we're going to do now. So here's probably what happened. No one really knows for sure, but we know he had to have someone who was responsible for placing each individual letter or the movable typeset for the following page that was to be printed. He probably had a press man, an ink man, and a paper man. The ink man would have used something known as ink balls, where the ink was worked or lathered in really more or less into the leather of these particular balls, and then the ink was evenly distributed across the movable typeset. The next thing that is important is the printer would use something known as a brisket. And a brisket is nothing more than a printer's term for a paper holder. And this particular brisket holds maybe 20, 25 separate sheets. As the brisket is set upon the movable typeset, it lays upon the plank, it's slid under the press itself, and then this press is actually going to apply approximately 80 pounds of pressure. But the press itself, literally, onto the plate, is going to be applying about 2,000 pounds of pressure. So what I'm going to do is take the press beam, move it all the way across to hit the cheek beam, bring it back, and then slide out the plate. We know we've had a successful print, as if you can hear a good adhesion of the paper from the ink onto the plate. And this would be the end result of the initial page that was printed by Johann Gutenberg. This should give us a good idea of what Gutenberg's finished work actually looked like. The double column text, the beautiful illuminations, the rubrications, and of course the ornate designs throughout the entire text of the page. What probably is the most fascinating about this whole concept of the printed work, or the art of printing, is that all of these pages would have had to have been collated, set aside, laid to dry, and then assembled and put together. You can only imagine how difficult of a task that it would have been for Gutenberg to accomplish this. But interestingly enough, his work, the very first work in the printed work, is essentially considered one of the finest works of art ever created.